Welcome to CSI Training. Our mission is to impart the information, techniques, and confidence to successfully apply RBM, reliability-based maintenance technologies and products. Thank you for joining the thousands who have recognized and selected CSI Training as the world leader for quality instructional products. This program, Industrial Application of Balancing, builds on another program, the Fundamentals of Balancing, and takes you with us inside industrial plants to balance three machines. The first two machines are belt-driven overhung fans that require a single plane balance. You will see firsthand the significance of performing the seven pre-balancing checks and the effect they have on the success of the balance procedure. The third balance job is a hammer mill that requires a two-plane balance. You will learn how to estimate a trial weight location that will reduce the vibration and not drive it up. You will be able to recognize a resonance condition and determine how to overcome its effects. You will be able to estimate system lag and use it to your benefit. You will learn to overcome the problems associated with belt drives and how to perform a couple balance on overhung or center hung rotors. You will be able to use the tips and techniques presented here to increase your confidence in balancing common industrial machinery and avoid many of the common problems associated with field balancing. Let's take a look at the first single plane balance job. A successful balance job involves much more than just applying weights on the machine. To ensure success, you must know the history of the machine, including the last work that was done on it. If you're not the person who has diagnosed this machine's condition, but are simply called upon to balance it, there are several questions you must have the answer to. What makes you think the fan has a balance problem? It's shaking pretty bad, huh? So it's never run smooth since it was moved to that part of the plant two years ago? What was the last work that was done on this machine? This is a very important question, because more often than we'd like to admit, the last work done on the machine is the reason the machine is not running as well as it should be. For this span, no work has been performed on it since it was placed here, except for some attempts at balancing and replacing belts. What is the process this fan is used in? Does it move air only, heated air, or a product? This question keys you in to the amount of buildup wear or thermal distortion that can be expected in the fan. How critical is the machine to the process and how much time will we have to work on it? In this case, the fan is critical to the process and the plant capacity is substantially reduced when it is not running, costing thousands of dollars per hour. Therefore, only a very short time was allowed for the balancing and except for vibration data, the pre-balance checks were disregarded. The vibration data was collected and a quick analysis was made to verify that the problem was indeed unbalanced. The fan was an oversped fan, meaning that it turned faster than the motor. This is indicated in the spectral data from the motor points, showing a peak of 1785 CPM and another at 2650 CPM. The fan inboard points show a dominant peak at 2650 CPM which is fan turning speed indicating a probable unbalanced condition. The one times peak in the horizontal is very high at 1.1 inches per second. It is about three times higher than the vertical direction. This three to one horizontal to vertical ratio is typical for a machinery balance problem. The axial measurement is as high as the vertical direction at the turning speed frequency. This points to other possible problems such as shiv misalignment or a bent shaft. Since the fan is overhung, axial vibration can be generated if the shaft is bent past the bearing or if there is an unbalance on the outer edge of the fan. The multiples of shaft turning speed in the axial measurement point to a mechanical looseness condition, which may be amplified or forced by the extreme unbalance in the fan. After the fan is balanced, these harmonics may disappear or be low enough that immediate attention is not demanded. When the fan is stopped and locked out, the rotor can be inspected for buildup and broken, loose, or missing parts. The rotor is clean and does not need additional cleaning. Now the balance job can be set up. A horizontal and vertical reading are used at each fan bearing with a sensor at each measurement point. These will not be moved during the entire balance job. The balance program will perform the calculations, minimizing the vibration at all the measurement points. 
Select a convenient location on the shaft, trying to place the reflective tape in line with a known component such as a fan blade. Take extra effort to make this as accurate as possible. This fan blade now becomes the zero degree mark. There are 10 blades, so they are 36 degrees apart. The blades are attached to a plate and the balance weights can be attached at any angle on this plate. Therefore, we will mark the blades with the appropriate angle. The fan rotates this way so the angle increases against rotation, which is the true phase method of measuring. The second blade is marked 36 degrees, the third 72 degrees, and so on. When the photo tack is set up in line with a sensor, calculations for estimating trial weight placement and system lag will be simpler. However, if the sensor and photo tack cannot be in line, additional corrections can be made for the calculations. Here we must choose which sensor to line up the photo tack with. A rule of thumb is use the sensor with the highest vibration and let it be the zero location on the rotor. However, in this case, the inboard side may have a direct influence from the belt drive, making estimations inaccurate. So the horizontal sensor closest to the fan is selected. The light beam from the photo tack should strike the leading edge of the reflective tape when it is directly in line with the sensor. The balance job must be defined in the analyzer. Enter the machine name, the number of planes, which in this case is one, and the number of measurement points. The measurement point locations and tack locations should be recorded. Define the sensor type and the units for balancing. Here we are using velocity. Verify that the MUX channels are correct. Close the hatch and fasten it securely. Check to make sure cables are out of the way. Remove the lockouts and start the machine. The first measurement to be made is the reference run or as-is run. The data from the outboard end of the shaft closest to the fan is the data we must count on and use to make any calculations such as trial weight estimations or balance corrections. When the machine is stopped and locked out, the trial weight can be attached. The trial weight must be welded onto this rotor. It was estimated that a trial weight of one and a quarter ounces would be sufficient to affect the balance condition. When weights are to be welded on, be sure to include the weight of the welding rod. Weigh the rod first and calculate the length required to complete the weight. After the weight has been welded on, Weigh the remaining rod to verify the amount added to the rotor. The more precise you are with this, the better the results will be. Enter the exact trial weight amount and location into the analyzer. The location was arbitrarily selected at 10 degrees. Now the trial run measurement can be made. Close the hatch, remove the lockouts, and start the machine. Make the trial run measurement to check the effect of the trial weight. Be sure to watch the data during collection as an indicator of the stability of the machine. Notice that the amplitudes are higher, indicating that the trial weight was either too much or in the wrong location. The rule of thumb for a trial weight is that it should change the angle by 30 degrees or the amplitude by 30%. It is best if it reduces the amplitude rather than increasing it. With the reference and trial run data side by side, we can see that the angles have indeed shifted and the inboard measurements which were the same are now separated by approximately 120 degrees. However, the outboard side now has similar phase angles. The amplitudes have more than doubled on the outboard points. The analyzer calculates the correction weight at 1.13 ounces at 279 degrees. The amount of the trial weight was close, but it was about 90 degrees from where it should have been. This trial weight must be removed and the new weight placed at the recommended location. This correction weight is weighed as accurately as possible. The welding rod can be the variable to bring the weight to the exact amount called for. The correction weight is placed as accurately as possible to the angle called for, which in this case is 279 degrees. Once it is welded in place, the result of this weight can be measured. First, enter the exact amount and location of this correction weight as it was applied. 
The analyzer bases all future calculations on this weight and location. Any inaccuracies here will be multiplied in the next calculations. Close the hatch and start the machine. Select Make Measurement and collect the data with this correction weight applied. Be sure to watch for the stability of the phase and amplitude at each measurement. The amplitudes are much better, but the horizontal measurements are still too high. Comparing the horizontal measurements, the phase angles are about 180 degrees apart, meaning that while one end of the shaft is moving one direction, the other end is moving the opposite direction. This is difficult to correct using a single plane balance procedure, but it may be able to be brought to acceptable levels. Note also that the highest vibration is on the end of the shaft away from the fan. This suggests that this vibration is not all caused by the unbalance in the fan. This condition usually has minimal results with a single plane balance. The correction weight produced good results, so it is left on. The calculated trim weight is 0.21 ounces at 154 degrees. The weight is weighed and modified to be as accurate as possible. It is placed at 154 degrees on the rotor and welded in place. The remaining rod is weighed, confirming the amount actually applied to the rotor. Record this weight in the analyzer under the trim weight. Remember that trim weights are based on leaving the previous weight on. These new trim measurements are collected. The steadiness of the phase angle indicates whether there are other occurrences or sources of vibration at fan speed. A phase angle that fluctuates more than 90 degrees or walks the 360 degrees is due to other energy at nearly the same frequency. It could be a nearby machine or a multiple of belt frequency. The results of this trim weight reduce